Hello, everybody. This is Mrs. Wallace. And today for class, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a read aloud. And normally at the beginning of the year, I always start Harry Potter. Oh, don't don't boo yet, because we may get to that. But right now, because of how we are starting school and how unusual it is, I am actually going to read a different book, um, one of, another one of my favorites. You're going to find out that Miss Wallace has lots of favorite books. But this book is called Sideways Stories from Wayside School. And what it is, is it's a little strange. And if you have already heard this or somebody has already read it to you, don't give it away. Um, but I would like everybody else to close their eyes and imagine with me while I read aloud. But before we read aloud, there's some things that we're going to talk about. Because in reading, as readers, we do multiple things at one time. We don't just call words. We don't just read words and put them in sentences and then paragraphs that become stories. What we're doing is our brain is working constantly. Um, it is decoding words. It's trying to make meaning of everything. It is visualizing what we're reading. It is making us think about questions that we might not have thought of. There are so much to reading and it's not just reading. And I just want to say kudos to you all because reading is amazing. And when you read, you are amazing. So before we get started, I want to, I like to look at vocabulary first. And so there are a couple of words, let's say three or four that I really want us to look at. The first one is um, opinion. We've heard that word before, but what exactly does opinion mean? That is a word that we're going to hear in that very first chapter uh, when I'm reading. And so an opinion is a belief or a judgment. Um, it's a way of thinking about something. It, your opinion might be only yours, or it could be two or three other people's, but it might not be everybody's opinion. Um, and we write in opinion, and Ms. Muhammad is going to be doing a lot of opinion writing with you this, this year. So um, it's very important that we do understand what that vocabulary word means. So it is what somebody thinks about a particular thing. Um, for example, I think summer is the best season. You might think winter is. And you have your reasons, but it's an opinion. Okay, the other word that I want to um, ask if you know what it is, and we've heard it, but do we know what it means? So the other word is absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely means that there is no restriction, there is no qualification. For example, you don't have to add anything to it. You don't have to take anything away from it. It means totally, complete, absolutely. So no limitation whatsoever. So we have the uh, vocabulary word of opinion and we have the vocabulary word of absolutely. The third one that I want you all to be on the lookout for as I'm reading, listening for it, opinion, absolutely. And then the other one is investigate. Hmm. Again, we've heard all of these words before, but what exactly does investigate mean? When we investigate, what are we doing? Well, we're trying to find out something. We're trying to find out the facts. You might investigate a story. You might be a, a policeman that's investigating a crime. You might be investigating who ate the last cookie. I don't know. But when you investigate something, you are trying to find information. You're trying to learn the truth. So those three words you're going to hear uh, today as we read. Next thing we're going to do is because Wayside Story is a little strange, Lewis Sacker, who is the author of Wayside Stories, all that um, series, he has put a lot of fun things in into the story and a lot of things that make me go, huh, because remember, while we're reading, we are thinking. That is that big word of metacognition. We're using our brain. 
So we're thinking, well, the very first chapter opens up with Miss Gorf. Hmm, that's a funny name in and of itself. But Miss Gorf loves apples. Who else supposedly loves apples? You're right. Teachers love apples. You see them on their desk, everything that is in their uh, a picture frame, everything that you give them for Teacher Appreciation Week or Christmas says number one teacher and there's an apple on it. There are lots of things that teachers get with apples on them because a long time ago, it was a way to pay teachers. When the Wild West was happening, um, which Mr. Boberg is going to talk about uh, expanding the West as we get through fourth grade, when it was growing into a new nation, they had to have teachers out on the frontier. Well, back then, they didn't have Walmarts. They had to live off the land. So one of the things that they would do is they would give food to their teachers. They might even have to house them. And so they would bring bushels or baskets of apples to these teachers. And that's how that kind of started. Um, when I investigated a little bit of it, uh, I found that long time ago, um, even ancient Greece, which y'all learned about in third grade, uh, the apple was a divine fruit. And that meant knowledge and education. And so it just has come across through many years that that is what teachers like. Hmm. Knowledge and knowledge is power. Apples are power. Well, in this very first chapter, Mrs. Gorf loves apples. Well, that's kind of strange because we're going to find out something crazy about Mrs. Gorf now. So let's get to it. Um, so we're listening for three vocabulary words. When I get done, because they're very short chapters, when I get done, I'm going to have some uh, questions because I was thinking while I was reading. You're going to probably have questions too. So if you have questions, you can you can write them down or you can send them to me uh, through Google Classwork, uh, Classroom. Excuse me. And so here we go. Again. Our book is called Sideways Stories from Wayside School by Lewis Sacker. This book contains 30 stories about the teachers and children at Wayside School. But before we get to them, there's something you ought to know so that you don't get confused. Wayside School was accidentally built sideways. It was supposed to be only one story high with 30 classrooms all in a row. Instead, it's 30 stories high with one classroom on each story. The builder said he was very sorry. The children at Wayside like having a sideways school. They have an extra large playground. The children and teachers described in this book all go to class on the top floor. So there are 30 stories from the 30th story of Wayside School. It has been said that these stories are strange and silly. That is probably true. Mm -hmm. However, when I told the stories about you to the children at Wayside, well, they thought you were strange and silly. And, you know, that's probably true, too. Chapter one, Mrs. Gorf. Mrs. Gorf had a long tongue and pointed ears. Can you picture it? She was the meanest teacher at Wayside School. She taught the class on the 30th floor. Now, if you children are bad, she warned, or if any of you answer a problem wrong, I will wiggle my ear, stick out my tongue, and turn you into apples. Mrs. Gorf didn't like children, but she loved apples. Joe couldn't add. He couldn't even count. But he knew that if he answered a problem wrong, he would turn into an apple. So he copied from John. He didn't like to cheat, but Mrs. Gorf 
had never taught him how to add. One day, Mrs. Gorf caught Joe copying John's paper. She wiggled her ears, first her right one, then her left one. She stuck out her tongue and turned Joe into an apple. Then she turned John into an apple for letting Joe cheat. Hey, that isn't fair, said Todd. John was only trying to help a friend. Mrs. Gorf wiggled her ears, first the right one, then the left one. She stuck out her tongue and turned Todd into an apple. Does anyone have an opinion? She asked. Nobody said a word. Mrs. Gorf laughed and placed the three apples on her desk. <laughs> Stephen started to cry. He couldn't help it. He was scared. I do not allow crying in my classroom, said Mrs. Gorf. She wiggled her ears, first her right one, then her left one. She stuck out her tongue and turned Stephen into an apple. For the rest of the day, the children were absolutely quiet. And when they went home, they were too scared to even talk to their parents. But Joe, John, and Todd, and Stephen couldn't go home. Mrs. Gorf just left them on her desk. They were able to talk to each other, but they didn't have much to say. Their parents were very worried. They didn't know where their children were. Nobody seemed to know. The next day, Kathy was late for school. As soon as she walked in, mm, you guessed it, Mrs. Gorf turned her into an apple. Paul sneezed during class. He was turned into an apple. Nancy said, God bless you. When Paul sneezed, Mrs. Gorf wiggled her ear, first her right one, then her left one, and stuck out her tongue and turned Nancy into an apple. Terrence fell out of his chair. He was turned into an apple. Mauricia tried to run away. She was halfway to the door as Mrs. Gorf's right ear began to wiggle. When she reached the door, Mrs. Gorf's left ear wiggled. Mauricia opened the door and had one foot outside when Mrs. Gorf stuck out her tongue. Mauricia became an apple. Mrs. Gorf picked up the apple from the floor and put it on her desk with the others. And then a funny thing happened. Mrs. Gorf turned around and fell over a piece of chalk. The three Erics laughed. <laughs> they were turned into apples. Mrs. Gorf had a dozen apples on her desk. Joe, John, Todd, Stephen, Kathy, Paul, Nancy, Terrence, Mauricia, and the three Erics, Eric Fry, Eric Bacon, and Eric Ovens. Lewis, the yard teacher, walked into the classroom. He had missed the children at recess. He had heard that Mrs. Gorf was a mean teacher, so he came up to investigate. He saw the 12 apples on Mrs. Gorf's desk. Well, I must be wrong, he thought. She must be a good teacher if so many people are bringing her apples. Then he walked back down to the playground. The next day, a dozen more children were turned into apples. Lewis, the yard teacher, came back into the room. He saw 24 apples on Mrs. Gorf's desk. There were only three children left in the class. She must be the best teacher in all the world, he thought. By the end of the week, all of the children were apples. Mrs. Gorf was very happy. Now I can go home, she said. I don't have to teach anymore. I won't have to walk up 30 flights of stairs ever again. You're not going anywhere, shouted Todd. He jumped off the desk and bopped Miss Gorf on the nose. The rest of the apples followed. Mrs. Gorf fell on the floor. The apples jumped all over her. Stop, she shouted, or I'll turn you into applesauce. But the apples didn't stop, and Mrs. Gorf could do nothing about it. Turn us back into children, Todd demanded. Mrs. Gorf had no choice. She stuck out her tongue, wiggled her ears. This time, her left one first, and then her right and turned the back children back into apples. No, she turned the apples back into children. All right, said Mauricia. Let's go get Lewis. 
He'll know what to do. No, screamed Mrs. Gorf. I'll turn you all back into apples. She wiggled her ears, first her right one, then her left, and stuck out her tongue. But Jenny held up a mirror, and Mrs. Gorf turned herself into an apple. The children didn't know what to do. They didn't have a teacher. Even though Mrs. Gorf was mean, they didn't think it was right to leave her as an apple. But none of them knew how to wiggle their ears. Lewis, the yard teacher, walked in. Where's Mrs. Gorf? he asked. Nobody said a word. Boy, am I hungry, he said. I don't think Mrs. Gorf would mind if I ate one of her apples. After all, she always has so many. He picked up the apple, which was really Mrs. Gorf, shined it on his shirt, and ate it. That's the end of chapter one. I want you all to do something with me, because as I was reading, I was thinking about, well, I'm not sure what some of this means. I'm not sure what that is. So I had to use what's known as context clues when I was reading. So one of the things that I had to learn when I first read this story was yard teacher. I thought, what is a yard teacher? So I had to go back and I had to reread it. And on page 13 of, of this book is where I found it. And in this paragraph, it says, Lewis, the yard teacher, walked into the classroom. Well, he had missed the children at recess. Hmm. So I had to put that all together. And I had to think about, well, yard where do we have recess? We have it in the yard. So maybe he's the teacher that watches out on the playground. So that was the, how I solved the mystery of a yard teacher, because otherwise I was just thinking, wow, they have somebody that cuts the grass? I, I would like to have somebody that cuts the grass. What's a yard teacher? Because I had never heard of that before. So I had to look at the sentences around to figure out what it is. I thought. I'm using my brain while I'm thinking. You will be too. All right. So that was one thing that I did. Then the other thing was at the very end of the chapter, when Lewis, the yard teacher, eats Mrs. Gorf, all I thought was, oh, I wonder if he's going to get sick. Maybe he's going to turn into an apple. All these things, I thought, well, maybe that happens. So I was trying to make predictions, and I don't know if I'm ever going to know or not. I'm going to have to read the rest of the story to see what happens to Lewis, the yard teacher, and to Mrs. Gorf. Is she gone forever? Maybe. All right. So when we finish this book, you're going to have it all figured out, and we are going to be better readers because we are – thinking about what we're reading. We're putting it all together. And so with that being said, I have a couple of questions for you. Number one, in chapter one, what's the children's problem? Hmm. Well, I want you to think about that. Number two, how did they solve that problem? Is it that they are on the 30th floor? Well, that's not really a problem because there's nothing to solve about that. So you've got to think a problem and then they're asking or I'm asking, how does it get solved? So it has to be something that got solved. That's a problem. <laughs> so how does Mrs. Gorf feel about her job and children? Mmm, said it right at the beginning of the chapter. And if you need to go back and re-watch this recording to get these answers, watch it as many times as you would like. The fourth question that I have for you. What does Mrs. Gorf do about her job and the children? <laughs> that one really should be very easy because she does it to the whole class. Hint, hint, hint. And the fifth question that I'm going to leave you with, and I'm going to put it in Google Classroom so that you can fill out this form and submit it to me, is 
What do you think about what happened to Mrs. Gorf? That's an opinion. What do you think about what happened to Mrs. Gorf? Well, my opinion, I'm not going to give you my opinion. I want to see what your opinion is, and I don't want everybody to have the same opinion that I have. So I want you all to be thinking about this. I want you to put on your thinking caps when you're answering these questions. And again, if you need to, go back and listen again. All right, that's my lesson for today. I will see you later.